a copper. I also give the people when they make chain. And so many people they make rim. This is 24 pounds. As you can see, all this is clean. I sell it to your fellow white man. After all, I don't know what do you do with it. Compulsive consumerism allied to built-in obsolescence, the hallmark of Western capitalism, or seemingly insatiable demand for material goods, fueled by an aggressive and predatory marketing. In the process, emptying the earth of its riches. And then this, the world turned ugly by the waste and weight of it all. The poor left to pick up the pieces. This is the world of Agabalushi dump in Accra, Ghana. But it also belongs to a world far removed from here. We are at a location where most of our young guys collect scraps within the city and then sort it. This area is not far from the city center. We have at least um, between 800 to 1,000 people working here. About 90% are migrants. We are Ghanaian, but we are not from this town. We are from north. Some people are buying aluminum, some people are buying copper, and some people are buying the irons. So if you just you, know, you throw it like this, and you send it to the place where they are buying it. This is power plant, system unit power pack. You just open it. You see how we open it. This is aluminium. This is copper. So this one, it's copper. So if, if you don't burn it, you won't get fresh like this, unless you burn it. I have two children. I did not want my children to work on this. This is not good. So I'm working hard to support them. Then they will went to school. Because this work is not good. I grew up in this neighborhood across the river. In those days, there was a mud flat along here. It was the color of like clay with a nice yellow powder and along both sides of the river were mangrove swamps and reeds. And in those days you would see canoes with fishermen standing in the canoes and casting their nets. It was beautiful but um, there was a gradual transition. There were conflicts in different parts of the country and people sought refuge here. But it has been at the cost of a habitat. But then once they had become established, it obviously became a location where entrepreneurs sought to recycle their material. You see them. Everybody is having his part, his working part. You see everybody is sitting. They are dismantling and those. Some of them are selling to me. If they bring their goods from the sack, we will take and go for the scale. Now talk about how we will manage it. So this one, I buy and try and then 35 Ghana series. But assuming, like if I go sell them, I can sell them five, 500 Ghana series, which we have our master. But our master will sell it to company. When I came here first, I'm dismantled. My master said, he give me the scale of wind for the copper. I like this, this job more than that dismantling. The dismantling there, I can get wound at any time at all. 
the dangers are very clear for us to see. Picking from here, we have instances where a, a, one of them picked an item and came and then tried to open it, it blasted. He lost his life. There are so many cuts they go through that could lead them to infections of tetanus. Most of them don't take care of it. There is nobody here you will try to explain to the dangers involved that will tell you that I am not aware. But he may ask you, okay, I stop today. Will you feed me? I answer steady. I wash my face. I will buy food and came here and eat and eat inside and do my work. Not that many children work in Agabalushi Dump, but on our first day filming here, we met with Peter. He was reluctant to talk to us, perhaps not used to seeing white people in this place, but he did talk to our translator and fixer, Bismarck. This might be cut off. This might be at the mirror. This one will be put up by daddy. Uh, we'll take the daddy, put her on the side, go with them. How old are you? How much you chop? 13. 13. So when you come, how long have you been here? Oh, four weeks. Four weeks? So one month? Yeah. Where your mommy day? Where your puppy day? Today, no. You didn't off, then you didn't go to school? Yeah, but then I came here, I didn't go to school. You don't go to school, so you stopped school? Yeah. Why one day here? Because we need money to go to our money. So if you collect this, land, how much did you get in a day? Two CD. Two CD? Yeah. So that two CD, what did they buy? I only use one CD. I only use one CD, but, but I always get four CD. I use two CD to shop. You know. Second-hand computers sell well in Africa. Those who can't afford the latest incarnation of what's best and what's shiniest must do with what's second-hand. So where did you get all these computer parts? We, we normally import them from countries like United States, from Japan, sometimes Australia, and then Germany too as well. And do you buy them brand new or are these second-hand? Uh, we only deal in second-hand um, stocks. This Dell computer here, what would that cost me? 350 Ghana cities. That's uh, about $75. And are these in perfect working order when you get them, or do you have to do some maintenance on them? We import it untested. You have to come and work on it. And the power problems and then the other problems that might be having, they come in with it. And the times that you're not able to fix them, what, what happens? We sell it at scraps because we have scrap dealers here that we normally source for them. What's the life expectancy of these computers here in Ghana? We can guarantee you for only just a month. And then the life expectancy for these computers, um, normally it lasts uh, for two to three years, you can, you can use it. What is fairly certain is that there is the huge second-hand market, so entrepreneurs would import digital equipment and electronic equipment second-hand from the West. Now, the lifespan would be pretty short, and so they'd end up here. Then, some charities in the West import electronic equipment to donate to establishments. But they, again, had a very short lifespan, so they'd end up here. And once they ended up here, they would be recycled. This is the place where my brothers, my brothers are burning copper here. Some people are using television, they will break, open it, they will burn copper. Some people are using air conditioning, computers, they will just guide it together and break it here to burn it. Then don't charge. And some people, they will just give the copper small one to give them and to represent their pay. They get group 
they will just guide it together, use it to go and win and share the money together. It's going to use it to burn the copper, using plastic to make fire. Some people are using fridge things, fridge, fridge kaku. When you just dismantle fridge, you take the ions and leave the rubber and you bring it to make fire. Some people, if they are going to, they will use something to cover their mouth before using some people, they don't care. We are very much aware that most of the items, especially electronic gadgets, last maximum two to three years and then they become obsolete. What will, what will I do with this? What will be the, the, the end of this heap of plastic materials from the electronics? These are not items made in Ghana. These are items made from Asia, Europe, and any other part of the world. And we are just talking especially of the plastic. Now, you can't bury this because it will take years for this to become part of the soil. You burn it, and then the smoke takes the atmosphere and causes pollution. If I see this as a manufacturer in Europe or Asia or wherever, I should be worried. I should be asking myself, what will be the environmental impact of this waste? I do not know you, but I was very angry. So I followed my friends and I tried to start taking the metals. This is spring. This is spring. It's also a metal. So if I collect, I I eat in. If we, we do not wear the gloves, the metals can cut us. I come every day, Saturday, Sundays, Monday, Tuesday, every day. So if one day I could not come here, I can't get money to go to school. I use the money for to pay extra classes. After school, I come here to work, to get money for tomorrow. I go to school because I want to become a, a pilot in my future. Scrubs, scrubs, scrubs! Condem, condem, condem! Scrubs, scrubs, scrubs! This area, the house, I'll go by the scraps. One, two, three, four, five, five TVs. And then these things. Some have my telephone number. If somebody has something, you call me before I come to buy it. Oh! You say somebody come to buy the dad television. So I lost the dad television. Scraps, scraps, scraps! We have competition. Condemn Yazo! Would you like to buy it? I would like to buy it. Uh, how much? Oh, if you, if you can give me 10 series. Oh, 10 series, hi. I know go use them. I go spoil them. You see the problem. You can make a give them to city because when I buy 10 series, I know go feel sell it. Class. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Small wire day inside, any small bot. We are buy two CDs. Three CD I will sell it or four CD I will sell it. 
right now I want to go for a Google shift. So I want to go, I go sell it for scraps because of the business. We go pay 150, come for it. It's hard work, too much. Check, this one will be mount. Every day after after work, I'll go to the house and eat. They look after me if I'm hungry. David, his father is my uncle. We are cousins. His mom came from North. She's in North. See his father. He sacked him from this house. He's neglected his son. At times, I look after him and to try to give him food. If I have, I give him. This one is tomato, pepper, and onion. I blend it. I can't take care of this child every day because I have my family too. Me too, I'm fighting for my family. You see, I have four children. The business is, is not good. It's not good. I talked to him. He should stop that business. Uh, he said he needs the money. He likes books. When they give him homework, he tries his best. Oh, he has talent. They also help me. If I, I'm washing my school clothes, they give me water or soaps and wash them. If I finish eating, I'll bath and come and sleep. Here is a church, but they have not finished building it. So I sleep here. I want to stop working at the door. I'll go to school every day to become somebody in my future. David's situation is precarious. As an unaccompanied child with just four weeks experience in the city, Peter's situation is even more precarious. Around eight o'clock, I will go sleep. I will sleep outside. On this side, I always put the paper and sleep. Yeah, I was scared about to, but here yeah, you can't give me sickness. If I get money, I will leave here. I will go find another room and sleep in, you know. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, you see him. Talk. How am I going to give you? Me, 80. 80. 80. Quarter five is no good. 80. Okay, give me 16. Something that really couldn't get more personal. Fertility. Researchers have recently... Yes. But here, you can't give me sickness. If I get money, I will leave here. I will go find another room and sleep in, you know. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, you see him. Talk. How am I going to give you? Me, 80. 80. 80. Quarter five is no good. 80. Okay, give me 60, my last. 60. 60. Yesterday, I'll get profit 50 cities. Today, my profit will be 10 cities. So today is not good for me.
the question we may ask is the producers the consumers of these sets of machines television electronics whether europe or asia should they be responsible for the waste when these machines are become obsolete beyond their uh, countries of origin it's electronic materials that you have produced that has become scraps in ghana yes we can say they should be responsible now why because we live in a global village now the marks it is the metals so i, I wear short sneaker that's why the metals cut but now i'm wearing the trouser so now the the metals cannot cut me if i do not work i cannot come to school my father did not give me money so i work and get my own money. One day I finished working. Uh, it was evening and I'm going home. And some men, they, they were too. They were smoking. And take and um, collect my money. It is heartbreaking to see Ghanaians stuck in these conditions which are unhealthy and pursuing livelihoods which are detrimental to their health and the associated problems with societies that are massed in tight corners such as this. Yes, that makes me really angry. The 35 OECD countries, essentially the richest countries in the world, Ireland included, produce about half the world's waste. Africa produces a mere 5%. It could be argued that we approach waste disposal with a certain amnesia, flush it, bin it, recycle it even, and then forget about it, as if it becomes somebody else's problem. And it does, as in here in Agabalushi. While that problem offers opportunities for some, it does so at a cost, not just for the people living here, but for all of us.